Not everything old can be made new again, and some things tend to get lost in time. When big civilizations like the Mayan Empire, the Indus Civilization, Greenland's Vikings, and a lot more tend to go poof, well, people have questions, and let's see if we can answer some of those today. So a scene of a scuba diver exploring a massive Egyptian statue might seem like something from, you know, a mummy movie, a historical fantasy, but it's actually archaeologists attempting to piece together the history of the great city of Thonis. Once the gateway to Egypt, it is now on the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, hanging out. Like the fabled city of Atlantis, it sank beneath the waves. Nobody is quite certain why though, and today archaeologists are attempting to excavate the remains of the sunken city for answers. Specifically in the early 2000s, a group of divers working off of the Egyptian coast found a large fragment of rock under the seabed and brought it up. They kept looking and they found six more. And that's when they were like, what's going on here? Around these pieces laid other treasures. The ruins of temples, shards of pottery, precious jewelry, coins, oil lamps, and they have a lot of processional barges and bursts. Unlike Babylon, Pompeii, or Atlantis, turns out not a lot of people in today's world know of Thonis. So apparently until the remarkable finds of recent years, there was a danger that the waves of the Mediterranean would actually make this city so that nobody knew about it anymore. Even the memory would have been gone. But don't worry folks, we remember. At its very height, the Maya Empire extended throughout the Yucatan Peninsula, modern day Guatemala, Belize, and parts of Mexico, making it one of the most dominant civilizations of its time. These people were quite advanced, demonstrating remarkable engineering skills and employing complex mathematics. The civilization appeared unable to sustain itself and experienced a dramatic decline around 900 CE. So archeologists now believe that the Maya were victims of ongoing war, coupled with climate change that resulted in famine, forcing an exodus from their largest cities. Decimation of the countryside, resulting in diminishing resources, also might have played a role in this civilization going poof. The Indus civilization began building settlements in present day India and Pakistan as early as 8,000 years ago, making them one of the earliest civilizations. And by the third millennium BC, they occupied over 386,000 square miles of territory, much more than their better known contemporaries in Egypt and Mesopotamia, and accounted for an estimated 10% of the world's population. They also developed a writing script that's still yet to be deciphered as far as I know, and their cities contained sanitation systems that remained unequaled until Roman times. Around 900 BC, however, these people, also known as the Indus Valley or Harappa civilization, went into freefall. The population abandoned the cities and migrated to the southeast. Originally, scholars believed that an invasion from the north brought about the collapse, but that theory is no longer in vogue. Recent research instead suggests that the monsoon cycle essentially stopped for two centuries, making agriculture nearly impossible. And then you've got earthquakes, cholera, a couple of other things that might have played a role. From about 700 CE until European contact and colonization, much of the American Southeast and Mid-Continent was known to a civilization known as the Mississippians. One of their largest cities, Cahokia, was located near modern-day Collinsville, Illinois. Estimated at six square miles, this area featured a massive central plaza, large earthen pyramids, and wood structures similar in shape to Stonehenge that were used to track the stars. Some estimate the population of this area? 40,000 people, with many living in villages outside the main city. As with other lost civilizations, experts don't know what certainly led to the gradual demise of the Mississippians. Popular theory suggests that the decline was the result of environmental degradation or famine and disease resulting from poor sanitation. Thanks to the spread of corn cultivation from Mexico, indigenous villages began popping up around 1200 years ago in the fertile river valleys of the American Southeast and Midwest. By far the largest of these was Cahokia, located a few miles from present day St. Louis, Missouri, which at its peak hosted a population of up to 20,000 people similar to that of London at the time. Surrounded by a high wooden stockade, this inaugural US city featured many plazas and at least 120 earthen mounds, the largest of which, known as Monk's Mound, stood 100 feet tall and was built with some 14 million baskets of soil. Meanwhile, just outside the wall, a ring of red cedar posts, dubbed Woodhenge, likely served as a sort of solar calendar. The city, a natural trade hub due to its position near the confluence of the Mississippi, Illinois, and Missouri rivers, seemingly thrived in the like 1000s and 1100s, but it allegedly started declining around 1200, right when a crazy bad flood is known to have hit and it was long deserted by the time of Columbus's arrival. In addition to the flood, researchers believe overexploitation of natural resources, political and social unrest, diseases, and the so-called Little Ice Age as possible causes for the fall. 
According to the Icelandic sagas, Eric the Red led a fleet of 25 boats to colonize Greenland around 985 AD, not long after he was temporarily banished from Iceland for killing people. Setting up two colonies, a larger eastern settlement and a smaller western settlement, these Vikings herded goats, sheep and cattle, built stone churches that can still be seen today, and hunted caribou and seals. Thriving, or at least surviving, for hundreds of years, their population grew to roughly 5,000 people. Yet when a missionary expedition arrived in 1721, intent on converting them to Protestantism, it found nothing but runes. Archaeologists have since determined that the western settlement failed around AD 1400 and that the eastern settlement was abandoned a few decades later. The onset of the Little Ice Age in the 14th century was almost certainly a contributing factor, as it clogged the route in and out of Greenland with sea ice and shortened growing seasons on what were already highly marginal lands. To make matters even worse, the market collapsed for the Viking Greenlanders' main export, walrus ivory. No one knows, however, what delivered the final death blow. Some experts believe they simply packed up and returned to Iceland or Scandinavia, whereas others think they starved to death, succumbed to the Black Plague, or were exterminated by locals. Because, uh, there have been some other folks there. At any rate, the Vikings were far from alone in their failure. At least three other societies have likewise perished on Greenland, including the Dorset, which for a brief time cohabited the island, and, uh, some other folks. The Olmecs were a civilization that was once completely lost to time. Historians were totally ignorant of their existence until they were rediscovered in the mid-19th century. Upon further investigation, archaeologists and historians discovered that the Olmecs were not only just another Mesoamerican civilization, but the ones who laid the groundwork for the Maya, and even the Aztecs to thrive and prosper. Much like the Maya, the Olmecs were also capable of constructing impressive stone temples and cities with relative ease. It is thought that they controlled large areas of territory in Central America between 1600 BC and 350 BC. Thought to be the mother culture of most Mesoamerican empires and kingdoms, the Olmec style of architecture, governance, and even religion can be seen all throughout the region. Suffering a similar fate to the Maya, during the 3rd century BC, the major urban settlements of the Olmecs slowly became deserted and fell into ruins. It can only be assumed that they must have faced similar environmental and political circumstances to the Maya, leading to the same devastating results. Despite the mysterious and unexplained decline, of the Olmecs, much of their culture and way of life continued to live on in other nearby peoples who would unknowingly carry on their legacy. Located deep in the thick jungles of Southeast Asia, the mighty Khmer Empire ruled over what is now Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, and part of Vietnam. Founded in 802 AD and lasting until 1431 AD, this empire is an often overlooked state that was once a major player in the incredibly lucrative trade routes that led into China and the Indian subcontinent. The empire saw its apex under the reign of the rule of Jayavarman in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. There was an explosion of the large temples and religious monuments that they are known for during this period. Now, water reservoirs were also constructed during this time period, greatly increasing trade and agricultural output. In the 13th century, the introduction of Buddhism to Khmer slowly eroded the Hindu influence that had previously dominated the nation. As more of its people started to convert to this new faith, the previous temples and monuments were slowly abandoned and left at the mercy of the jungle. Increased attacks from Thai folks also caused much upheaval and is certainly one of the leading causes of why so many cities and temples were abandoned at this time. By the middle of the 15th century, this empire had effectively collapsed. And the true reason for abandoning its capital? You guessed it, unknown. Discovered in the mountain region of Cappadocia in Turkey, the underground city of Derinkuyu is perhaps one of the most stunning archaeological finds of the last century. Built underneath the mountains is a subterranean city that at its height is thought to have been the home of more than 20,000 people. The city is more than 85 meters beneath the earth and boasts 18 different levels of tunnels. The exact date of when the city was first built is not exactly clear, but there are a handful of historians who suspect it to be Hittite in origin. Now these were Bronze Age people who lived in much of the Anatolian Peninsula. Known for their warrior culture and mastery of the chariot, these folks, like many other civilizations, were wiped out during the Bronze Age collapse between 1200 BC and 1500. So if this theory is correct, then it is possible that many of the original inhabitants left to seek refuge from war, famine, natural disaster. But then there's some other counter theories that maybe this area was built in response to the collapse and was intended as a kind of fallout shelter from what would have been nothing short of an apocalyptic event. And 
finally for today, setting out by canoe sometime between 300 and 1200 AD, Polynesians somehow found and settled Easter Island, one of the world's most remote places, located around 2300 miles west of Chile. Even more remarkably, despite lacking wheels or pack animals, much less cranes, they managed to erect hundreds of giant stone statues, called moe. The largest of which stood 32 feet tall and weighed 82 tons. Now, there's another one named El Gigante, so big guy, stood 72 feet tall, weighed at least 145 tons, never made out of the quarry. By the 1800s, however, every statue had been toppled, the population had crashed, and the island's chiefs and priests had been overthrown. By analyzing charcoal fragments and the pollen and sediment stones, scientists have since discovered that Easter Islanders cut down almost every last tree and that rats ate the tree's seeds before the forest could regerminate. This ecological catastrophe, which eliminated the ability to make rope or seagoing canoes and reduced the populace to burning grass for fuel, may have ushered in a period of mass starvation and war. The arrival of Europeans only added to the death Starting in 1722, when the first Europeans to set foot on the island immediately uh, killed several islanders. By the 1870s, several waves of smallpox, along with a whole raid, reduced the number of locals to roughly 100. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident emo girly. See y'all next time I buzz in over here at Bumblebee.